Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 6, Episode 2. This episode, like many, will have some controversy, but let's get started. If you would hit like and subscribe, that would be most helpful for me. First, we're going to look at the different participants. There will be nine of them. And let's look at the portraits that they did in order to be accepted into the program. They had unlimited time to sub for these pictures that they're showing now, whereas today they're only going to have four hours in order to get a painting accomplished. As the program goes on, there are commissions where they have more time, and we can talk about that as the episodes continue. But for this part, it's just interesting to see who our different participants are going to be, what their styles are, and how they decide to show the world who they are. We're looking for maybe original ideas and different techniques, and just a general idea of who the field is. I've looked at the application process and it demands a lot of commitment by these artists with hardly any remuneration. So the people that are showing up, I know they're taking this seriously. I'm sure there are some that just want to be on television, but you know, that's, that's the bargain that you make in watching any reality type program. So that's fine. I, I don't have any problem with that. Trevor Nelson is our first model. We always have a celebrity model. He is a disc jockey, a producer, and a TV presenter. They've placed him in front of a blue sort of sea wave thing going on. And I like it when the artists incorporate that in their design, but we'll see. Sometimes they don't. Four hours into the episode, uh, yeah, four hours not into the episode, but... Uh, into their time, they turn their easels around and Trevor gets his first look. He's going to take one of these home. Uh, this is a very, very cold painting with blues and violets and burnt sienna. It's, uh, burnt sienna is actually the one warm element in this painting. I, I prefer more warm and cool elements playing against each other than what's happening here. And that's just a palette distinction that, that he and I have a difference about. From far away, that holds up quite nicely. He definitely has a roundness of form. He's anchored the figure in. That's a very competently done job. Is it the colors that I would kind of veer toward? I would say no, but that's a stylistic difference. Here's the next one, which is very, very different than anything we've seen in the program at all. It is done with um, pencil, colored pencil with annotations around it, and then beyond that, there's a border with more annotations. So it's almost like a journal entry in a way, if you've ever seen artist journals. Only, in this case, he's sort of bringing that more informal, observational sort of thing to this, to this program. I'm not opposed to it, but I don't know how to judge it when it comes to Portrait Artist of the Year and ultimately what's going to be a commission that needs to hang in a gallery. Here's the third one. I love how relaxed the model is. That shows great drawing skill. I don't think they had much time to get to the painting part of it and probably, uh, well, well, we'll find out later, but, but I think we get to see more of this and we can see that he was restricted in terms of the time constraints. But, yay, because he anchored it in. He at least made lines that showed that this, this uh, figure is, is resting on something. So I really appreciate that. Where, whereas later we're going to have someone who did not do that, and uh, we have that island surrounded by oceans issue. Trevor picks one to go home, and the one he picks is this one. And look how thrilled the artist is. Yay. Okay, that's one I would have picked too. Now, the next model is Noel Clark. Noel Clark is a British actor, producer, and director. So, they placed him in front of just a pretty monochrome background. I have no idea why they choose what they choose in terms of the, the, the chair, the setting, any of that. But, um, let's see what happens. So, four hours in, the artists turn their easels around. Here's the first one up. Well, the first thing I can say is it does not have a likeness to the sitter, which is not the only criteria needed here, but it's important. Um, uh, wow. This is not somebody who I think has a lot of experience, is my guess. It's kind of, um, looks like a very beginner painting to me. Hmm. 
Yeah. Um, what's happening here is that they're they're they've found they found shapes, which is good, but there's a you're not getting a sense of volume or roundness really. There's a real flatness to the painting overall. So uh, even when we pull back, I don't think that's going to stand up. But we will see. I'm always surprised by the judges, so we don't know yet. Here's the next one. This has some proportion issues going on here. It also doesn't resemble him, um, but I do like the use of color, much braver with color than the previous artist. You can see some nice blue going on where the eye meets the nose. You know, that's always a really nice touch, not just using flesh tones in order to get your shapes in place, but use some real pigment. But here's where I fall apart, which is you have an island, which is his face and head, surrounded by ocean. Just anchor it in with some strokes, please. I always find a disembodied head uh, just an uncomfortable image to look at. I know it's because they ran out of time, but it only takes a few seconds to, to make those outline shapes, and I just would have appreciated it. Here's the third one, and this is the strongest, and act actually does resemble him, So, uh, and has a richness of color in the background, which as we know from the actual setting wasn't there. So that's a des design decision and a palette decision, which I think was a smart one. Also, there is some use of titanium white, but it's used very sparingly, so things haven't gotten chalky or washed out. So that's nicely done and shows some confidence as a painter. You can see how round the face is and the forms are, and that comes from just understanding how to paint um, better than maybe the first or the second artist that we saw in this particular section. So now, of course, Noel's going to pick one to take home, and I know which one I would pick, as usual, but let's see which one Noel picks. Oh, good, he picks the one that is the strongest. Yeah, isn't that a lovely painting? I wouldn't mind having that in my home. It's beautiful. All right, the next one is Ashley Roberts. She's an American singer and was a member of something called the Pussycat Dolls. I don't really remember what that is, except somehow I seem to remember something about Pussycat Dolls in Las Vegas but it's a very vague memory for me. They put her in front of purple and some stripes going on behind her. Well, we'll see if that plays into the, uh, the paintings at all. Four hours in, painters turn their easels around, and that first one, I'm thinking, uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, here's the first one that we get to look at, though. Um, interesting. Pretty minimal in terms of painting. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely drawing with paint, so that's, that's happening. Um, I don't know how this could possibly take four hours to do. That's a mystery to me. Um, you know, the, it, its strength is in its outlines of forms, but not in the building of forms. And so I almost feel like if this was a sketch competition, this probably would have been a very, very strong contender, but that's not what it is. It's Portrait Artist of the Year, and the final commission demands that you have the full range of skills. Now this one, um, was worrisome for me when we first saw her because uh, I thought, why is this woman entering this competition when she doesn't seem to appear to paint faces? <laughs> but, but I'll be more specific about that later because it's going to come into play later. And I do am not opposed to minimal, minimalist painting at all. I adore minimalist painting when it's done well, but I don't think it's done well here. She did not run out of time. She's just not interested in the formations of a face. She's interested in sort of getting an impression, but not necessarily more than that. And we saw that in her entry. But like I said, more about that later. This was one that was alarming to me when um, the paintings were being turned around. Now, part of it is a bias that I just don't like the, these colors. I, I would not have used these colors in my palette. It just screams Barbie to me. Those kinds of pastel colors and those kind of like... Um, artificial colors that you don't find in nature. So I had, think my biggest problem is I just don't like the color palette. But more than that, there is not a likeness to her. And there's some proportion issues going on in the face in terms of, you know, how far apart those eyes are and, and how long the head is in back. It's, it's, there's something odd about, like I said, odd about the proportions. Now Ashley picks one to take home, and boy was I surprised at which one she picked. But she picked this one, so that's great. Uh, now that I look at it's not, um, I don't know, not my favorite, but but that's, uh, they weren't asking which was my favorite, were they? <laughs> no, they were not. 
Now, as the competition goes on, what we get to do is the final judging begins. So we have nine participants, all very hopeful, probably exhausted from the day, and only three will go on to be considered for the winner of this particular episode, episode two. Here's the one that I really liked, which showed how relaxed and the figure is and how good a draw uh, a drafts person this person is, but I just think they ran out of time. And we're going to find out more about that in a second. Here's the one that I felt was really strong from the very beginning. I do feel like this is the strongest painting of the entire day, but again, they didn't ask my... Per <laughs> they didn't ask me. But you know, what we are doing in this program, though, is we are making comparisons, and part of making comparisons is sort of bringing your bias, I guess. Now, the reason I said I was going to talk more about this later is I am not opposed to minimalist painting. I am not opposed to minimalist painting at all. And here's an example of David Chavino, who did a minimalist painting portrait, which I think is fantastic. But look at the difference between the two. One had a tremendous range of value, and and this one doesn't. So here's her entry uh, portrait in order to get on the program, as well as what she did today. And as far as I'm concerned, I just, I just won't even consider it. This is Portrait Artist of the Year. If it had been Painter of the Year, I might even consider her as a contender. But as Portrait Artist of the Year, she has not demonstrated anything here that shows me that she is capable of, of uh, doing the final commission. And you know, quite frankly, if they pick her, I, I just think it would be just so insulting to everybody else. But I'm, I'm kind of in a mood today, so maybe I shouldn't have said that. Now, this one shows what a careful and particular, particular to detail painter the painter is when you see the one on the left, and then look at the one that he did in four hours. So it's really clear to me. He just ran out of time, and he can do the final commission. He, he's demonstrated without a doubt that he has those skills. So let's just hold on to that and see which, this, this is the part that I think will be hard for the judges because clearly this is someone who is competent and can do the job. Here's the third one. We've seen many painters like this that they've passed over before. So um, uh, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, uh-oh, this guy's not going to make it. They're going to go to the no-face gal. But... <laughs> Uh, because they want people to talk about the program. They want some controversy. But um, I was pleasantly surprised that, uh, that the judging in the end was something that I did agree with. So let's see what happens with the final judging. The final judging is between the three people that we just saw, but only one can go on and be in the finals. And this finalist will be paired with another eight who haven't been determined yet, into the semifinals, where they will battle it out for the title of Portrait Artist of the Year. So the winner is, dun 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 dun, dun this one, yay, I'm happy with this one. It, uh, it, it checks all the boxes that I needed to check, and that I do want to see more from this painter. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint sweat, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.